welcome back. On this episode, we're going to make an aluminum lunchbox. So, I did not make this. This was bought by my grandfather back in the 50s or 60s. But I'm going to make one of these for my wife. So it should be fairly simple to make. Uh, and they're nice and light. And the reason you want to make it out of aluminum, not mild steel, you can wash it and everything. It's not going to rust or corrode. It'll be good forever, basically. And it's nice and light, too. So you make it for your kids or whatever. And it'll be really good. So don't forget to uh, subscribe and click the notification button. And also follow me on Instagram at Coral Garage. Let's get started. All right, so I've already gone ahead and uh, made my templates. So I have my top, and I already have my lines and my notches already marked out on it. So that'll be how the top will end up going. Those will fold over. So the reason I didn't do that on camera, it just takes a little bit of time to make these templates. So I figured I'd just go over quickly how I made them. This is the bottom, and then this is the uh, end piece, so that'd be the top. And that'd be the top, and that'd be the bottom piece, like that. Uh, and I've already gone ahead and I have all my pieces of aluminum marked out, cut, and uh, ready to be bent. I figured the bending is probably the part that most people want to see. So I got all that stuff ready. But the way that I made my templates I had some cardboard so for the end pieces I just kept uh, trimming them until they'd fit into uh, this lunchbox. I wanted to make it the same dimensions as this for so I didn't want any bigger. And I just with the top on there so they flip in so I know I'm pretty close. And if you're wanting to make the same dimensions as well, this is uh, three and a quarter inches tall on the bottom by about uh, four and uh, three eighths long or wide, I guess. And then it's uh, four and a half wide on the top piece because the top is slightly wider then the bottom, because it slips over top, and it is uh, about three and a quarter inches uh, deep as well at the deepest point. So that will give you a good depth for these. And then I ended up tracing these out onto a uh, sheet of aluminum, and then I used my air shears to cut it, and then I used to do the smaller cuts and rounding the edges off. I just used a set of uh, hand tin snips there. That, I bought these at Canadian Tire. They were pretty inexpensive when they were on sale. That's always the best thing to buy. So that's the end pieces. And then I had a scrap piece of cardboard here. I used this to make the uh, bottom part and the uh, top part for my template. So that's why there's going to be multiple lines on here. But I had just grabbed this and I slipped it in. And then I went around and I made a line down right in the corner. Just like so. You can kind of see the uh, line. And then folded it over to the other side. And made another line in that edge. And then wrapped it back around. And then I was able to take it out. So I had my line at the one bend. And then my line at the other bend. And then I wrap this over like so and then I so it's able to make my line there and my line there I marked it off on both ends and then I used a straight edge to draw it all the way across and then I had my bend over at the end for where it finished and then since we're bending this 90 degrees like this I uh, cut out so it'd be nine or uh, so there'd be 90 degrees of material missing. So when we bend it up, we get that nice, perfect looking uh, edge. So I just came right off and then I'd used 
the square to the angle that was 90 degrees, and I just went like that. And I was able to use the uh, markings on either side so I can make sure I was as square as possible. That was my easiest, quickest way to do it with tools just kicking around. And then I traced this out onto an uh, aluminum sheet and I cut this out as well and then I used the air shears for the longer cuts and then for these cuts here I just used those tin snips so that just lays straight on there like so As you can see it's pretty good and then I just use a uh, pencil to make all my lines and then I put tape over top just in case the pencil started wearing off I'd be able to see the tape a lot easier and it gives a nice straight line as well so like we'll be bending from here that way and from here this way and then this will end up being the bottom and then these edges will bend up I'm making this out of uh, 20 gauge aluminum I wanted to make it out of 18 gauge but the uh, place where I was buying my uh, sheets they don't carry 18 gauge so I went with 20 it seems like it's uh, about the same thickness as what the original lunch pill is. So this might be uh, 18 gauge, but they're pretty close. So that was that sheet. And then I did the same thing when I was making the template for this one. I had laid it across the lunch pail and then I made lines at every uh, bend so if you have a bend here 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 and each of those bends are 45 degrees which gives you your total of 180 same with this 290 degrees gives you 180 so you know it's going all the way back around and then I did the same thing I had draped it over and I made my lines at each spot and it was a little bit shorter so I made the other line and then I just used my straight edge to connect the lines like so and then I was able to draw it across and then same thing on the edges except I went less than uh, the 90 degrees in here because I want them to sit a little tighter Oh, it shouldn't be too bad, it'll be something like so. And then trace that onto a sheet of aluminum. And then I'll be able to do all my bends on here. So on this one, I'll be doing a bend here that way, and here this way. And same thing on this side, these are my lines right here. with the tape, just so it's easy to see. And then these edges will uh, bend over after too. So we're going to bend these edges last, we're going to do these long bends first for the only reason that when we're uh, trying to bend it, if we already have these bent over, they're going to get in the way with the table and I'm going to use the table as my straight edge to bend it. So I've been meaning to build a break, but I haven't built a break yet. So this is going to work out really good for everybody because this is all stuff that is either easy to get or you probably have just kicking around in your garage. So the first piece we're going to bend, we're going to bend the bottom. The uh, overall dimensions of this is uh, about 11 and uh, 7 eighths by about 11 and 3 eighths. So on the actual total length of the lunchbox is going to be about 10 inches. We have about half an inch or so on each side that we're going to be bending over after. And then... Uh, putting our rivets in. We're going to get this straight out of our way. So I kind of made my own little break here. I just have a piece of flat bar. It's just one eighth inch. So I'm going to put that across the edge of my table like so with some clamps. And then I'm going to have the metal slipped in there and I'm just going to try bending by hand or I may even kind of take this and just roll it like that 
because it will give me a little more stability. So we'll start with that. We're just slipping this right in until it looks like it's sitting pretty good. I just got these kind of loose right now just so I get everything set where I want it. steady and then we're going to take this and just set it on top and just going to kind of roll it down that's one nice thing with aluminum it's uh, a little easier to work with you can see it's starting to uh, give a nice bend here already hammer and I'm just going to lightly tap it the rest of the way. That's one side, it needs to go just a little bit more, as we can see. So we, I'm just going to kind of put my fingers in the back here, and I'm just going to do it just slightly by hand. And that's looking pretty close there. Take our square and we can check it. And that's uh, pretty close. It's not uh, a super, super tight bend right here. So this won't bud right into the corner all the way. But you can gauge it and it looks uh, pretty good. It's pretty equal gap between uh, the level and the side all the way up. So we have a pretty good basic shape. We can do little tweaks once we go to rivet it together. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then that'll be our bottom. Just got to bend those over as well. That gives a pretty good basic shape. This is too big for this to fit in now. So I'm just going to grab one of my magnets. This is aluminum, so it won't stick at all. But we can still put it in here and see if we have a good basic shape, which we do. So this side could actually go a little more this way and this side could go a little more that way. So I'll just give it a little tiny tweak. Alright. So there's almost the bottom fully made. Before I go and bend these edges, 
I'm going to bend the uh, top part and get our basic shape into that as well. So that one's going to be a little bit harder to make sure we have the appropriate uh, angle just because it's not easy 90 degree bends. I don't have anything here that's 30 degrees and I don't have a protractor which would have been really handy for this actually to uh, get our final uh, bends. I could have drew it out and I could have made sure I was right on but that's okay. We'll just eyeball it a little bit and we'll be okay. So same thing, we're just going to flip this in. Get rid of our line as best as we can. Give this a bit of a roll down. It's probably pretty close, a little bit of this going by look. If you had an actual break, you'd have the degrees and everything on, on them normally, so you can get it exactly where you want it the first time, but we might have to play with it a little bit, which is okay. So, just looking at this, I can tell we gotta go more, because this should be flat and from uh, here to here should be 90 degrees and we can tell just with a quick look that we're not at our 90 degrees yet so i'm going to give a little more of a bend right now before i go into the other side and then this side will fall together easier to be able to look at it and it won't be both sides running out on us so we'll try to get this side a little bit better And looking at that, that's pretty close. Now we're going to bend up here and here to match it. Yeah, as you can see, we're pretty close. This side here still needs to go down more. But this top angle looks pretty good. So we'll give this a little more of a bend. But we're pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. We might need to do a few little tweaks on it, but it's uh, definitely pretty close. One thing with the uh, lid, you're going to want to finish your bottom first, because your lid gives you the option to uh, make adjustments to make it fit properly. Be, there's not really any adjustments on the bottom piece, because it's just two 90 degree bends where this is four, approximately 45 degree bends. So if you need to be a little wider, you can take a little bit out of these bends to make your lid wider to fit your bottom, or if you need to be narrower, you can make your bends more aggressive to tighten it up to uh, fit your bottom, which is looking like when we get to that stage, that's probably how we're going to have to go, because we got a bit of a gap there, which tells me we're going to have to bend the top a little tighter but we want to finish the bottom first is our best way to go about that so we get the bottom done bent up to size and then we make our final tweaks on the lid to uh, fit what we have for the bottom so I'm just going to take a pair of pliers and I'm just going to go kind of right on my line and I'm just going to very slowly 
start initiating my event. Like so. So as you can tell, we're not going a lot at a time, just nice and slow. If you try to go too much at once, you'll end up having ugly waves, waves after. And as you can see, I got that initiated. It's bent almost all the way over, and I'm going to take my anvil, I'm going to go on the back and I'm just going to tap it over to get the desired shape. This gives me a rough idea of how square I am. And we're looking pretty good right there. So now we're going to do that to all the other ones. And then we'll be able to be ready for the next step. Well, that's one side. That's looking pretty good. And that's with our end piece just slipped in there. That fits pretty good all the way around. So we're pretty happy with that. Now we just gotta bend this side up and then we'll be able to start we'll be able to get the uh, lid bent a little bit nicer. I'm just gonna I'll have these just set in temporarily. But I'm thinking about tracing around this line here and then bead rolling to step it out just a little bit just so it when it's stepped out it says flush with this. So I think it'll look really good. And then I think I might put my wife's initials in the top and the bottom there. So I'll do her last name here. So we'll do a, a nice C with the bead roller, I think is what I'm gonna do. And then on the top one, I'll do an M for her first name. I think it'll look really nice. All right, so that's roughly what the bottom's gonna look like. These are just loosely in here for now. And it's coming along pretty nice. So I'm going to tighten these bends up a little bit now until I fit that much nicer. So we're going to end up having to make these two top bends tighter and we'll probably have to take a little bit out of these two side bends. So when we bend these two right here, it's going to shrink it up a little bit. But then that's going to change the angle where these are to coming in more, so we'll have to just feather them out a little. All right, that's fitting much better now. As you can see, it just... Nice and snug. So now we can go ahead and bend all of these over on both sides. And then we'll be able to kind of fit the uh, we'll be able to fit the uh, side piece. And then I'll end up going on the bead roller and just making it a little more decorative than it needs to be. But you can skip that skip that step. It's like my original lunchbox. It's just the uh, flat aluminum pieces in there. So I'm going to do a little step on it and I'm going to do a little bit of bead roll just to make it a little fancier. Alright. 
That's four saves. Bent up now. That fits pretty close. It's looking pretty good. So I'm going to finish the bottom now. I'm going to trace the edges out on this, and then I'm going to go in the bead roller. I'm going to put a little bit of an offset in it. Not too much, just a little bit. I think it will look pretty nice. And then I'll do a, uh, a little C in here too. You can kind of see my lines there. So we're going to bubble this section out. Alright, so we're going to change these dies. And we're going to put my lowest profile dies on. So that's not going to give too much of a uh, offset, just a little bit. But I think it will look really sharp. That's going to be awesome. I need to do a little extra trimming down on my corners here. But that's going to look really good versus just completely flat. That gives it just that little bit extra. Alright, I finished up the uh, bead rolling that I wanted to do. It was pretty hard to make the M. It turned out not too, but I have a little bit of sanding I have to do around it just to make it look perfect. The C turned out a lot better because I'll do it just in one foul swoop. But it will look something like that. So it has their initials. Nice, nice. I've gone ahead. I drilled one rivet out and put one rivet in. And now I'm going to continue on with the riveting. I'm going to finish this bottom piece first. So I'm going to do two rivets here, two rivets, and two rivets. I'm going to make sure that I keep my top rivets below the height where the uh, lid's going to come down over it. So my top rivets will roughly be about the top of the C because we know we're not going to cover the C. So that will just be my easy reference. And then we will, uh, once we get both sides done, then we'll move to the lid and continue on with that. And if you do have tape on it around this uh, seam, Take it off before you start riveting it all together. So I'm going to go ahead now and start drilling and uh, putting the rivets in. Drill the appropriate size holes for the rivets that you're using and uh, you'll be okay. Now I'm going to grab a pile and just kind of clean up any burrs. Insert it all the way, make sure everything's tight, and just start squeezing. Once you start getting everything secured together, it starts getting nice and tight. That's good. Fits pretty decent too. Alright, I finished getting everything riveted. That's all pretty good. And now I measured a line about three and a half inches from the bottom up all the way around, and then I put tape. So this will give me an easy visual to see how far I want to slip the uh, lid down on it. So I just kind of get it lined up. And then I just bring my line. 
line top of the lead right with the uh, top of the paint line or the tape line there that's what it's going to look like when it's done and now I can mark my uh, hinges out and I can drill my hinges in and then rivet them in place I couldn't find any silver or luminy looking hinges this was the uh, best that I could find so that's what I'm going to go with and I'm just going to put the this edge right on that tape line top and bottom and that should keep it nice and square so I'm just going to lay it down right here and I'll put a little bit of tape on when I get right where I want it to help keep it in place yeah that's looking pretty good right there now it'll stay in place on the hinge side That's the whole pattern. And now I can drill these all out. Cleaned up all the burrs from drilling, so it's nice and smooth, which is good. So we're just going to rivet these hinges on now, and then we'll uh, clean them up a little bit. I'm just going to kind of cut these guys off and clean up out here a little bit. Alright, I'm just going to use the edge of the table to uh, hammer the remainder down. Okay, so that's that side, now we can get these hinges on to the bottom. We're going to peel some of this tape off now because it would be really hard to get off after. We are going to leave the tape across the front for now though. With the style of hinge that I got, the uh, rivet comes down a little bit. So I have one down low. And it looks like it's going to come really close to kind of rubbing on here. So I'm going to cut just a little bit of a notch here. Yeah, that looks really good.
That's looking pretty decent. Now we just need to get the uh, hinges on the front. And we'll kind of do the same thing for lining them up. We'll use that tape line. We're just going to take the tape off so it's not in our way. And then get the, these bottom latches on. It does go down a little bit further, but that's right where it's supposed to be sitting. And then when you're carrying it, the handle's going to be on top. So that's going to work out really nice. So the last thing we're going to do is not the handle. When I was uh, looking for hinges, I found a really nice handle for her. It's nice and sparkly and diamond. So you kind of cool, give it a little bit of a nice touch. I was going to set something like that on the top, except there's not really enough room to have a winter glove on. And up in Canada here, it gets pretty cold, especially lately. We've had a lot of minus 25, minus 30 Celsius. So I want to have it up a little bit so it has a little bit of, uh, so there's room for a winter glove. So I made little standoffs. So when I screw it in, It'll be stood off the uh, box an extra uh, roughly an inch, three quarters of an inch and an inch. This would be pretty good. And we're going to put a uh, fender washer on the inside so it'll sit like that and it'll be the box and then the exterior. This way it gives a little more surface area. And I'm also going to put blue Loctite on the threads. So the last step, you want to find your center this way. So I found my center, I ran a piece of tape all the way along. And then I found my center this way. And then I measured out between these mounting holes. What it was, it was five inches. So I went two and a half inches from center each way. And now I just got to drill it out, pull the tape off, and then I'm able to uh, mount that down. Okay, now we just got to screw it in. Lunchbox ready to go. I'll mount it on. I'm just going to pull the rest of the tape off and then we'll call it finished. Yeah, Alright, so there's our lunchbox. There's the MC on both ends for her and for Maya's initials. So she always knows which lunchbox is hers. And she has her nice diamond handle. I couldn't find silver hinges. To match, but these are more of the style that I wanted. Then we got our little gas line or steel line uh, standoffs. We have lots of room, so we can have a thick winter glove in for when it's cold up here. And then we have our hinges. These ones you can even actually lock too, so you can, if you had your phone in that in there, you could lock it up. And then I put those. Fender washers for the handle to help disperse the weight a little bit. And that's what it looks like. There 
pictures. All done. And this is what the original one was. This was one that was my grandfather's, and then my father's, and now it's mine. So it was bought back in the 50s or 60s, I believe. So, uh, that's that. It has similar style hinge. The latches are a little bit different. They don't lock, but they're a nice, clean latch. So, uh, so, side by side, they look pretty much the same, other than a little extra work went into this one as far as the uh, bead rolling for the initials and that kind of stuff. So, pretty awesome. And they're virtually identical. And there's not too, too much money. And on this one, I was about $5 for the two hinges. And there's about another $5 for these two latches. And then this handle was, uh, I think it was like 11 or $12. And then I bought a 4x4 four four sheet of aluminum, which was around $85. But I have lots of it left. I could make quite a few more if I want. So that was the sheet of aluminum. And as you can see, I just used very little of it. Just this section of it here. And that was a 4x4 four four sheet. So I'm anticipating doing other jobs with aluminum. So all in all, I probably have around $40 or so into it with material plus my time. It was a fun little project. She's going to like it and it'll be good for many years to come. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification button. And check me out on Clark Garage on Instagram. Have a great night.